Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. First of all, you guys know the drill. If you guys please smash that like button, I'd really appreciate it. If you guys could leave a comment down below, I don't care what it is, it super helps the channel out. It is Thursday afternoon. I shut the shop down, about to head home, but I wanted to give you guys a quick little update. Um, sorry, once again, for the lack of videos. Um, we've had one thing after another around here and we've been slammed and uh, I filmed a couple videos that I just haven't edited yet. But uh, just one thing after another around here, but I wanted to get you guys some content and uh, get back on the uh, YouTube upload bandwagon. And uh, over here on the body side of the shop, I want to give you guys an update on my 70 Nova. Now I've had this car for about five to six years and I've never really driven it. Um, when I got it, it was probably the roughest car um, you'd ever seen. I'm um, talking, we had holes in the floor. We had a stop sign that was covering it. Um, we had a Campbell soup can covering a big hole in the uh, firewall that they did when they hit it with a sledgehammer to make room for the distributor for the big block 454. Um, cracks everywhere. Um, car leaked it pretty much when it rained outside, it rained inside. The car was rough, guys. Um, loved the car. It looked awesome. It was spray painted black. Had a big skull in the hood, just like the death proof car. Um, but, uh, for years, I wanted to restore it, and I kind of started on uh, doing some of the restoration work. Um, I did put in a couple floor pans. I'm going to go ahead and open up the door here. Um, and I started kind of doing some work, but just life happened so many different times. You can see here, we body worked it, and uh, realistically, this car does need new quarter panels. Um, it needs pretty much new everything, new door skins. Uh, it needs new fenders. It needs just new everything. Um, everything was just rusted and rotted as well as most of the car itself. Plus most of these cars just really are rotted. So it's nothing new. It's just to realistically restore this car, it needs to hit a rotisserie, needs to get sandblasted and needs to be, um, rebuilt from the ground up. Um, honestly, it would probably be cheaper to just buy one that was already refinished. Um, I really don't want to restore this vehicle. I've come to realize that not every vehicle needs to be restored. Um, and uh, for years, this thing's just kind of been sitting around and I've just not known what to do with it. Uh, Mikey and I were able to get the engine started. So shout out to Mikey for helping get this engine started. And that was full of water. Um, so I'm not sure how long she will last, but she does run. And uh, so I'm confident we will be able to get it to run, stop and drive. Um, since the last update I gave you guys with this video, um, you can see here, um, it's all painted black. The firewall, the dash, um, the interior. Now, if you guys remember about a year and a half ago, we did my 1968 Chevy C10. I kind of did the same thing, uh, building a shop truck. We just went through and sanded everything inside and out and shot with black epoxy primer inside and out. And then a couple coats of hot rod, black satin paint. And I love that truck. It's not restored. It's fun. It does burnouts. It's awesome. I enjoy it. And it didn't cost me a million dollars to restore it. Um, I did go through that truck and do like new lenses, new door handles, new locks, lots of new little bits and pieces and little stuff like that. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with this. Um, I actually already have the fenders um, fully, re fully refinished and painted. The hood is painted. Um, we have the trunk lid painted. We have new emblems. We have a new grill. We have a new carpet kit. Um, we'll have a whole bunch of new parts, like new door handles and locks, um, headlights, stuff like that to go on this car as well. We have all the trim in really good shape. Um, so we are going to be prepping the rest of the car, which is just the two doors, the quarter panels, and the roof. And we are going to get it refinished in this satin hot rod black. And then we're going to go ahead and reinstall all the glass, new windshield. And then we're going to go ahead and get the door gaskets all installed and try to get this thing sealed up as much as possible, hopefully to the point where it doesn't leak any water and we can actually get it outside. Um, that way it's not taking up valuable shop space either in here or in our storage. And uh, we will um, start piecing it together piece by piece. Um, you can see here the wheel liners are just sitting here. We got them kind of prepped out. Um, we are gonna go ahead and hang those and get those painted as well as the battery tray, the uh, radiator hold and uh, this front uh, trim piece and this uh piece here as well um, so we have a few more pieces to paint um, but for the most part um here is the finish you can see um it's just kind of a hot rod black and like i said not every car needs to be restored perfectly it just sometimes just doesn't make sense 
and this is not high on my priority list but you can see here um, the dash looks really nice we're gonna get a brand new dash pad we have the cluster um, we'll probably restore this shifter and uh, yeah um, eventually we'll just piece by piece start putting interior back together we'll get a headliner we'll get some door panels um, some rear panels we'll have the rear seat reupholster we'll probably do two brand new front bucket seats and uh, yeah eventually um, piece by piece but first things first get it sealed up watertight assembled get it outside so it's out of here and then eventually we will make sure um, we have a couple seats in the carpet so we can at least go drive it so there's an update on the Nova we did do some seam sealing and everything um, but there you have it I'm pretty pumped that um, at least it's covered in paint and at the end of the day we are going to be greasing those hinges at the end of the day at least this preserves it from rusting or rotting out any longer and we will make it look like this to a car again um, this car deserves to be a car again and uh, uh, one day I may decide to have it sandblasted and fully restore it the way I want to to show them quality or um, I'll find another one that's um, restorable and we'll just keep this one uh, to do burnouts and have fun with um, so there you have it on the Nova and then uh, we jump inside the spray booth here you can see our filters are missing and the booth looks really white um Teo and i just got done spending the last about five hours um, completely pressure washing and uh scrubbing off the old booth coating um, we spray a clear booth coating on these walls right when we put the booth up and that actually protects it that way when it gets overspray um, the overspray is not technically on the wall, it's just on the booth coating, and that booth coating actually dissolves with water. Um, so pretty much for the most part, you get about 80% of it off just by pressure washing it alone. And then you kind of take a scotch spray and you kind of wash the walls and scrub them down in a, a couple of passes. We had a little scrub brush and everything, and uh, it took a couple passes, but we pretty much have it about 98% perfect. Um, Really hard to get the crevices in here because this is obviously where the paint overspray comes flying as you're spraying. Um, you don't really see in there at all once the filters are in. So um, if I wanted to spend another um, 10 hours, I'm sure I could make those look brand new. Um, that's probably about as good as they're gonna get. We were able to get the overspray off the bulkhead of the exhaust chamber um, to uh, let our logo look really nice. You can see there's still water drips up on the ceiling and uh, Everything looks really good. Even down here on the floor, super pumped. Um, definitely like a nine out of 10 as far as uh, how new she looks. We have new intake filters for the pre-filters, intake filters, as well as brand new exhaust filters. We're gonna re-coat it with the 3M booth coating. And uh, we are also gonna be doing some resealing. We're gonna go ahead and re-caulk the floor. Um, we're gonna fix the concrete cracks. And uh, we gotta do a little caulking around the exhaust chamber and there is a couple other seams that we'll probably check as well and uh, another thing we were not happy with was we were getting a lot of dirt pulling in on the corner of our lights so we're going to uninstall each one of these light fixtures and uh, one by one we're going to be using 3m double-sided tape and adhesion promoter and cleaning the glass and actually sealing these uh, pieces of glass to the booth panel um, to get a more sealed um, fit if that makes any sense. So, um, and then we'll reinstall our lights. So the booth is gonna be down for a few business days here, um, but we've had this scheduled for a while and the booth has been up for a couple years, so it has lots of use and it's just about time to um, come in and clean up some of these seams and make sure everything's sealed. And uh, the booth was overall performing real well. We were still getting quite a bit of nibs here and there for the most part. It has been better lately and I've figured out kind of techniques to, um, of course, uh, uh, do a good spray job in here. But uh, unfortunately, um, there are some leaks. So I think with all this work, we are gonna be uh, saving ourselves some time in the future as far as cut and buffing and doing in color standing and stuff like that. Cool, we'll be getting some cleaner work, I think, so. Um, plus, it looks really nice when it's nice, bright, and white. So there you go on the booth update. Um, that's what we're doing for the next few days. Today is Thursday. We're gonna let it dry all weekend, um, make sure everything gets nice and dry. And then Monday morning, we're gonna start re-coking, resealing the lights, and then we'll get, probably by Tuesday, hopefully we'll spray the booth coating 
and uh, Wednesday we can uh, throw the filters in and um, get back to using it, get back on track. Um, one of the last videos I left you guys with was the Jetta. Um, I was breaking down in the Jetta. Um, we went out to shoot some content, Teo and I, and uh, one by one, actually, multiple vehicles were breaking on me. Well, don't, don't worry about the other vehicles. Those are all handled now, but the Jetta itself, um, we limped it back to the shop and it was very disappointing that uh, it felt like our clutch was out. Well, I didn't waste any time. We got it up on the lift just to discover that as soon as I took the transmission out, um, the pressure uh, flywheel to pressure plate bolts were actually all loose. Not just one, not two, but every single one of them. Somehow they had vibrated out and they all came out. And uh, luckily nothing was severely damaged, although every part of the clutch and flywheel component set was slightly damaged and I had to thread chase all the bolts and uh, I decided just to go ahead and throw a new flywheel clutch assembly kit in it. I uh, cleaned up all the bolts. I used red Loctite on everything, reassembled, um, torqued of course, and uh, threw it all back together and uh, it works great now. So unfortunately it wasn't that our clutch went out because it was a new clutch uh, that had about 100 miles on it, but uh, uh, that just the bolts vibrated loose. Now I could have took the starter out and probably tightened them back up, but without putting Loctite in them, they probably just vibrated loose. So I'm not sure exactly why um, they backed out on me. Um, I know I torqued them. Um, potentially they were supposed to be Loctite from the, but I didn't see that from the factory or the torque yield bolts that maybe should have been replaced, um, but they should look fine. So I reused them with Loctite, a lot of Loctite. So. They shouldn't be going anywhere anytime soon. If they do, I will be flabbergasted, honestly. But there you go. Jetta's looking good. It's probably about time to get this thing washed up and detailed. We do have a car show coming up at uh, uh, DriftCon After Dark. Um, it's a big drifting event, so I will leave a link in the description action to that event. We have entered in the VIP trackside uh, car show. Um, so this thing will be out there um, looking fresh. Um, so I'm gonna jump over here to the um, lift bay. And I'm actually gonna show you guys the clutch and flywheel of what happened here. And uh, still kept it over here just so I could show you guys what exactly happened. Now here is our new flywheel um, that when you take the transmission, our pressure plate is actually bolted to the um, crankshaft assembly this way. So the flywheel, when you take the transmission, is actually exposed like this. And the first thing I noticed was all the little bolts that go to the pressure plate were all backed out about a quarter inch. And they were actually rubbing the inside of the bell housing of the transmission. Uh, scored the inside, didn't do any damage besides that, so I'm really lucky there. Um, obviously we just cleaned up and made sure everything was in working order. But uh, what I didn't like about the flywheel was there is a little dowel pin right here. And you guys can see here it had sheared off. Now the pressure plate only goes on one way and uh, it lines up with that little dowel pin. And since it sheared off, I thought that could put extra stress on these bolts that didn't need to be there. Um, but other than that, everything was still good. It just had uh, loosened up to where it just wasn't grabbing. So I've never had that happen ever, but you can see there, it was sheared off. This is just our alignment tool. And then uh, in here, our clutch disc, you can see it has plenty of life. You can see a few marks here and there, little tiny slight gouges and little tiny micro chips out of the surface that just don't look great. It kind of looks like a clutch disc that you dropped on the concrete floor. It just looks a little bit beat up from getting smashed around. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it just does not look perfect. I'm sure it would have worked fine reusing this. Um, and then you can see this, and you can see our pressure plate. Damn near looks new still, but you can see that little bit of a wear spot right there and right there. Um, you can't feel it, but um, it is there. And uh, otherwise, you take off this little cover, Everything looked good. Our pressure plate to crankshaft bolts were tight, so um, everything looked good there. Um, but I went ahead and took off those, and we went ahead and put red Loctite on those as well. And uh, when we installed the new um, um, clutch assembly, so uh, first things you do first is you put the pressure plate on, you put your bolts in, you torque all those to spec, and then you actually. 
put this little cover on and then this is held in by this little clip right here you can see the two holes right here so that'll clip in place and then your clutch disc lays over that and then you use your alignment tool like that and then i'm not going to have that on there right now but the alignment tool will help align the center of your flywheel here and then if you got to pay attention to this little dowel and that little dowel lines up with the little notch in your clutch pressure plate and that essentially goes over like that and it was just like i said flop it around in there um never in my entire life had that happen so i was very very surprised to see that but i wanted to show you guys what happened um i didn't obviously leave the bolts loose um the thing actually worked amazing for 100 miles then it went from amazing to not working at all in just one drive so not sure why that happened but let's cross our fingers that the red loctite and everything being clean and new and you know, i chased the bolts that everything is good to go reinstalled everything and we've taken on a couple test drives and we are good to go um you can see sean's uh 1985 chevy c10 here square body chev it is a long bed um you can see here he's doing like a nice destroyer gray color he's been picking away at this for um the last uh, month or two and uh, you can see there he's got the plaid headliner and stuff in there um he's got a motor that he's put together um that's getting ready to go in here he's just kind of got it up on the lift right now he's been cleaning up the frame trying to clean up some of this rust so he can go ahead and get some paint on it so it looks nice and fresh and then he's already got the fenders and the hood and all that stuff already painted he still has to do the box and then he did do a lowering kit as well you can see here he's got these uh drop springs and uh shackles and springs and uh pretty cool new shocks but uh so she is lowered he did do a little mini notch there you can see in the frame um so i will give you guys an update on this truck as i can um, but right now it is on the lift um, looking pretty cool he does plan on doing some sort of stripe down the side of it so we'll see how that goes um, but uh, i'll give you guys an update on that as he gets a little further along um, so back to the jetta um, like i said we are going to driftcon after dark i will leave a link in the description to that event um, so check that out below and uh, keep your guys uh, eyes out for some content and footage and pictures on our Instagram and YouTube from that event. Um, but here, the Jetta is in the spray booth. And the reason I have it in the spray booth right now is uh, not only does it look cool, but I wanted to show you guys what we have done. So I spent yesterday afternoon and uh, about an hour today installing some new LED lights. Now, LED lights, I mean, underbody lights so we're gonna go ahead and open the door and we have a little controller here i haven't mounted it yet because i want to put a bracket but we have led lights underbody and it's got a it's pretty cool this is an led kit from xkglow.com um i did upgrade the controller that can use it gives you a controller so you got your mode options your color and your brightness and you can switch to the app as well and use a phone but i'm just going to cycle through all the colors so you can do lots of colors I'm not sure uh, i just like it on the blue but there you guys go you guys can see that or not but it looks awesome so we pretty much have two strips on each side of the vehicle. We do plan on ordering two more strips to go across the center of the rear bumper. There's kind of a gap there. Um, the way I mounted it was probably a little bit different from how they intend, but on the Volkswagen chassis, there just wasn't the best um, room and area to mount the lights. But super pumped. Um, this will be a great um, little touch uh, at the car show. Um, because we'll be having it parked there with the uh, LED lights on like this. Um, but super pumped on that. So I just finished that today. And like I said, um, the controller is just loose right now because I still got to figure out um, some sort of mounting bracket. I'm not going to just drill a bunch of holes in our dash for this. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Um, but there is a pretty cool controller that I did upgrade now. 
I, like I said, I did get this kit from xkglow.com. And uh, so far, I'm really impressed. It was uh, a little more expensive than some of the cheap kits you can just go on Amazon and buy. So here it is. Here's the box. Um, for how much I paid for it, it did come in a package that wasn't well insulated. So the box was a little bit banged up when I got it. Um, but fortunately, everything on the inside was still good. Um, so here's the box, XK Glow. And you can see here, it came with some instructions. And since I upgraded the controller, um, it gave you separate instructions for the controller. And these lights are pretty cool because you can actually get them to um, light up as you signal left or right, or even when you brake. So you actually have some modes. Um, that way they, the left side of the car can glow or blink as you signal, So, or the right. And uh, pretty simple kit. You can see here they have a Lamborghini. Uh, I don't know if that's a, it looks like a Huracan here example, but they give you um, some tube lights and these link together and they just click together and they give you several harnesses. Um, I just installed it on the sedan and I still have two complete harnesses, uh, very long harnesses and uh, gives, they give you lots of stuff to attach everything with. Um, and uh, they give you pretty simple instructions. There's not much to it. You pretty much put the lights where they can fit and you secure them the best you can and uh, make sure you don't drill through anything and you secure the wiring as best you can keep it away from anything hot anything moving anything suspension anything like that and uh overall pretty decent quality i paid about 250 dollars for this kit um i did save five percent so i did get a few bucks off um, which i could justify upgrading to the controller um, which I kind of thought was cool even though you can use your cell phone and use the app to do all the modes and all the settings and stuff like that um, My phone's always dead most of the time and a lot of times it's too full of memory um, To even download an app So I decided just to go with the controller because I just want to turn the damn thing on and just leave it on blue Honestly, I don't need all the fancy features. I chose not to install the turn signal lights being a show car, I just don't see the purpose and how often I would be driving at night. Um, and honestly, even if I am driving at night, chances are I'm just driving back to the shop to put it back in storage or uh, you know, driving home from a car show or a car meet or something that I really don't need the underbody lights blinking. So pretty cool feature, but I just don't really need it. Um, the cool thing about this kit is um, this company, they make wheel well lights, dash lights, grill lights, all sorts of things that you can do add-ons later. Um, so. Um, I did spend a few extra bucks compared to some of the kits you can buy from other um, suppliers, but uh, overall XK Glow, the quality seemed to be there for sure. I'm very impressed with all the connections, the harnesses, the wires. I've seen a lot of these cheap lights and kits before just be very flimsy, very small wires that if you even bend them too much, the wires just break. So um, everything was very easy to plug and play. I pretty much spent most of the afternoon yesterday and about an hour and a half to two hours today finishing it up. And so I probably have around five to six hours totally involved, but I, that was doing a pretty thorough, clean install. Um, I do want to add two more lights. It will probably take me about 20 to 30 minutes to install those lights underneath the back. I don't even got to put it on the lift for that. Um, and I can just plug right into the end of the existing tubes that are underneath the back and just tie up the harnesses. And I'll probably honestly not use the two harnesses that I have. These are really long. I'll probably go ahead and order some short harnesses from XK Glow, as well as two 12 inch tubes to install underneath the back. Um, but we'll just uh, look at that one more time, guys. And like I said, it's xkglow.com. This is uh, not an advertisement of any sort of way, just kind of expressing that I actually am pretty impressed with the kit, so there, it's on app mode right now. I gotta download the app still. So there's dash, and like I said, there's three levels of brightness. So there's dim, medium, and bright. And then you got all your colors. And then you actually got a mode button too. And that's not me, you can have it just, I'm not doing anything right now, it's just cycling through all the colors. Hit it again, and it kind of pulsates on whatever color it's on. Hit it again, and it kind of fades into everything. So that's pretty cool. So that kind of does all the colors and just a slow transition. And on the app, 
you can actually do on the app you could actually set it to do like the left side of the car is blue the right side right and you can do all sorts of different things so it's pretty cool um, but uh, I'm really happy with it I've installed some cheaper kits before and I've installed street glow kits back in the day and uh, I think this was a great kit there's really not much to it guys they are universal at the end of the day they just kind of have to go under there in a secure spot there's not much to it they aren't uh, direct fit to each car uh, every car is a different length and everything and you got different um, chassis and stuff to run wiring but there you guys go tell me what you guys think in the comments of the lights I'm super pumped for DriftCon After Dark, so uh, shout out to Matt Pognis at DriftCon and ImportMeet.com. I will leave a link in the description to the DriftCon After Dark event, um, so go check that out, and uh, this thing will be out there. Um, hope you guys like the Nova. Tell me what you guys think about it. Um, I'm pretty excited to just have another car put back together, and uh, unfortunately, the Lambo uh, supercar build that we are doing we are building a exotic supercar out of a 200 dollars honda civic temporarily is on hold probably for another uh two months at least um but i promise i will be getting back to that we'll get it back in the shop and we'll get back on that for sure i also have some other updates for you guys next week so stay tuned so if you guys can please like this video leave a comment down below if you guys haven't yet hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one Rah. Ooh, like LeBron, though, or like Bonzo Ooh, I'm a baller, yeah, shot caller, yeah They love me, you can't touch me, nah, can't trust me I'm too lucky Look at me, look at you, what you see, what you do